Today, I'm talking to the three finalists of the VR Tech Awards, and the winner will be announced at the Vacation Rental World Summit virtual event in October. So stay tuned and listen to some great talk about tech. This is the Vacation Rental Success Podcast, keeping you up to date with news, views, information and resources on this rapidly changing short-term rental business. I'm your host, Heather Bayer, and with 25 years of experience in this industry, I'm making sure you know what's hot, what's not, what's new and what will help make your business a success. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. I'm your host, Heather Bayer, and as ever, delighted to be back with you once again. Well, it's this time of year again. For those of you who have been listening to the podcast for the last couple of years, you'll know that the Vacation Rental World Summit is usually held at some fantastic location in Europe. And I've been to a few of them, most notably in Florence a couple of years ago, and then again in Como last year. Unfortunately, the event, which was to take place in Annecy in France in October, was not to be this year and has gone the in the direction of every other conference that we've networked at and is now virtual this year. However, for those entrants into the VR Tech Awards, those three that made it to the final, they are still going to be their short presentations and those attendees will be able to vote for them. But you know, it is the recognition of this, I think, that is the most important to each of these entrants and to actually get to the final is a great, great achievement. So I'm delighted in this episode to be able to bring you three short interviews with the founders of each of the finalists. And that is uh, Keradine Kamal from Domo, Ben Smith from Check-In Scan and Christoph Salmon from Reviews. So these are three great platforms I'm sure you're going to be really interested to hear about. And you can also go to the YouTube channel Uh, I'll put a link in the show notes, but it's Vacation Rental Formula. Love you to go and subscribe to the YouTube channel because we're starting a separate tech section. And these first three interviews are going to be in that tech section. And I'm going to be doing, you know, I just enjoyed really talking to these guys about, you know, how they got into the business, what inspired them to create their platforms, a little bit about the benefits to hosts and managers and to the users, you know, the end users which uh, tend to be the guests, and to hear about what those benefits are. So I want to do a little bit more of those. I want to do some more and to interview a few more, well, a lot more tech providers and give them the opportunity to talk about their products and to have that uh, posted onto YouTube. Uh, I'll probably... Pull in Mike and Jason, my erstwhile business partners, to do some of their own uh, little reviews as well um, and interviews. So watch this space. It's something we're going to be uh, to be working on. So without further ado, I'm going to go into these three interviews. Uh, the first with uh, Keridine, uh from Domo and then Ben and then Christoph. So I'm not saying much in between them. We'll just go straight through the interviews and then I'll wrap up at the end. So away we go. Well, here with me today is Keradine Kamal or KK as (laughs) makes it easier (laughs) easier from Domo. So absolutely delighted to have you with me, KK. Whereabouts are you? Likewise, thank you, Heather. Um, I'm I'm in Paris at the moment. Yes, it might be a little bit sunny here, but yes, we're still in Paris. I know. 
Well, that is very nice. I, I have this huge benefit of being able to talk to people from all around the world. And uh, and it's a great pleasure to be speaking with you. And congratulations on, on your finalist position with the VR Tech Awards. This is the third yeah. year that uh, that I've been doing this, interviewing the finalists. In fact, we, we talked, I, I talked through with Vanessa back in July, and we talked through every one of the entrants. And it was a packed field this year. So congratulations to... Thank Thank you so much. To um, to the final. So, tell me a little bit about what got you into this. So, yes, thank you, Heather. Hi, everyone. So, I, I am the, the the founder and CEO of Domo. But as for the background, and it's probably going to give you a better idea and a better image uh, of who I am. I got in the short term industry with my family actually i'm originally from morocco and, and we had a property in marrakesh which was absolutely not used all year round and i was just wondering how we could make money out of it a few years ago that's how i started putting my first home on on airbnb which are which was our own property so that that's how i got into it let's say on a personal level and then um in, in paris i met two business partners and that, that we used to do the same they used to do luxury homes for short-term rentals with hotel services for the clients. Hmm. So they were in between Airbnb and obviously uh, hotels. And I brought all I brought my property on, on the website. We decided to partner. And that's how we launched the company initially at the time. It was about six years ago, which we developed in France initially, Morocco, obviously. We expanded in Europe. And then after two and a half years, um, we have been acquired by Accor Hotel, mm-hmm. which is one of the largest hotel group in the world. And we merged with another company that is called One Fine Stay that you guys are probably very familiar with. And that's how I got there and started expanding the brand for Accor and One Fine Stay in APAC. So I moved to Australia, um, which is quite quite different from Paris, I have to admit, um, <laughs> which is not bad. And I was basically taking care of um, yeah the implementation of the brand in uh, Australia, New Zealand, and other different regions there in Asia as well. Well, that's it's certainly getting you around. So uh, I got what it is that inspired you to create the platform. So tell us a little bit about it. What what is Domo? What does it do? You know, I understand. For, you know, for many owners and managers, and particularly myself, you know, I have a I have a property management company. We could not possibly use this sort of platform because I've got one property that's five hours one way and and we're, we're not urban. Is it is it essentially an urban platform? Initially what happened is that at the time when I was to, to, to be at One Fine Stay because I'm not there anymore and that's how we launched um, Domo with the previous CTO of One Fine Stay actually, um, is that we encountered one of the major problems as a property manager on a global way is that we could not deliver the I would say level of service that our guests were expecting, let's say in 2020, right? And what I mean the level of service is obviously the the digital access of the service for the guests when they were in stay, right? So imagine yourself, you're walking in a property and most of the time you have property managers doing a fantastic job presenting things in the leaflet or telling you, here's what you can do, please call us, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the idea of Domo came up at the time and we thought, okay, how can we deliver that experience in a seamless manner but at the same time, trying to take away all the pain points for the property manager when it came to mm-hmm. services, but at the same time, bringing them revenue. So, yes, it is initially launched in urban destinations um, because this is where you have, obviously, a concentration of services for the guests and the area where we operate. Um, so we initially launched in, in Paris. And Domo is basically a technology that can be embedded in tablets or in TV interfaces and that would give access to the guest to concert services that the property manager is going to be able to offer and as well as entertainment services so that they can enjoy their streaming, video, music, whatsoever while they're in the property. So, so it sounds to me like, you know, if you if you go to a luxury hotel and you have the concierge desk in the lobby, but this is the concierge that you have on your tablet and absolutely. As a guest. So absolutely. What, yeah, what sort of services you know, are, are the most popular? Yeah, because we are also providing so Domo is not only for property managers, it also serves the hotel the hospitality industry as in the hotels, right? So we are deploying um, hundreds of rooms in Paris. Um, etc where we are aiming the same kind of experience so you walk in that room or in the property and you have the tablet that tells you oh hey heather how are you doing today 
So based on the time where you checked in or the time where you're going to interact with the TV, the TV or the tablet, that's going to adapt and offer you the services that are going to be around. Let's say you're coming at 12, it's going to be lunchtime. So we're going to advertise with the banner the food that is going to be either in the hotel or in the nearest restaurant that you can basically click and either order to get it delivered to you. But we went further than just advertising, right? I use the word advertising, but it's an end-to-end technology, which basically allow any guest to go through the end of the booking process and inserting their credit card details to basically pay for the service, right? <laughs> so then they have the progress of the order um, that is coming to them. So that's for food. That could be for massage services. That could be for a spa. It could be to book a, an activity for a property manager to do biking or a visit of Paris, et cetera, et cetera. So we are embedding all of those activities and the guests can book them directly on the platform. Yeah, I, I see that as a huge benefit for for a property manager. You know, as a property manager, when we get the constant calls saying, you know, what can I do? How can exactly. I do how can I connect with the provider? So you're, you are sort of cutting out the property manager from that process, allowing the guest to seamlessly interact. Exactly, right. exactly. So this is where you want to lead. You want, I mean, I have been a property manager myself, and I know that my added value is to basically interact with the guest to, to, to deliver them a certain service or an information that they may need, but they, that they couldn't find in an easy way. But of course, at the end of the day, it's still me that is putting all those info and all those services into my platform, Domo. So it's a kind of a digital interaction with them, but you can still hit your manager up and ask him a question if you need, right? So yeah. we're not cutting the property manager. We're simplifying their processes because you may know in peak season, you have a lot, a lot of things to take care of. So that's just um, a technology that helps you still generate revenue while delivering a cool and digital experience for your guests. Yep, sounds pretty cool to me. So you 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 made the final three of the VR Tech yeah. Award. How would winning that award benefit you and your company? Oh, oh, that would be amazing. Well, first of all, uh, um, the 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 two other companies that are in the final are, have services that are kind of different from ours, right? But at the end of the day, um, we're super happy and honored to, to be at the final and. Of course, it's it's a huge exposure for us, right? So today we're operating in France, but with, with the COVID-19, we kind of adapted our operations and we are willing to, for, for 20, at the end of 2020 and 2021, to basically help any property managers that may need Domo in certain areas in, in Europe, obviously, first to start with, because that's where we're going to be able to kind of deliver it. And we adapted it with a solutions that could be exported very easily for even someone that could be in, um, in Italy, let's say. And what we've developed is that we adapted the Domo platform into a QR code technology. And hear me out, it's not just something that you scan and you have a picture or a PDF. No, no, we went a little bit further than that. You scan a QR code and you have exactly the same platform of Domo, but on your own device so that people mm-hmm. can still go within properties, but have the safety and protocols that they may want um, and still have the same level of service on their own device. Mm-hmm. This sounds great. I love, I love, you know, every year I'm hearing new products, new platforms, and it is so exciting to see how, how our business is a advancing. So you mentioned COVID, obviously, Vacation Rental World Summit is not going to be in right. Florence where I was a couple of years ago. And uh, <laughs> uh, where were we? Gosh, Como, Como last year. Como, yeah. Yes. And it, should it was be- NC, right? And it was supposed to be in France. Yeah. This year. Yeah. So we, we are going to be watching virtually. So I will be watching on the day to... Uh, you know, not quite in the beautiful environment that it was last year in Como, but uh, but we, we will do our we will do our best to support you and the other competitors. So um, how can people and when, when they're hearing this, you know, first of all they need to go and register for um, the Vacation Rental World Summit to go and right. cast their votes. Mm-hmm. Um, but if there are people who aren't going to be there, how can they get in touch with you and hear more about Domo? So there is going to be obviously a link, um, I, I believe, that is going to be under this video where I could either put my, my email or, or my LinkedIn. But at the same time, when people are watching this, they can simply contact us with contact at domo.ki. 
So um, that's the email address, contact, C-O-N-T-A-C-T, at domo, D-O-M-O, dot K-I. And we'll be happy to help or to assist in any way possible for any reach <laughs> that yeah, people that's... may inquire about. As you say, KK, the um, the link will be under is under the video here. If you are listening on the podcast, then you will be able to go to the show notes and find the sure. information on on how to connect. I just like Absolutely. To thank you for joining <laughs> me from. Paris thank you so much. Today. Yeah, thank you, Heather. And, uh, and I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more about you and Domo in the future. I hope. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So that was a great chat with Keridine or KK and hearing about Domo. Love that idea. Actually, I, I said in the interview that I wasn't sure it would work in our neck of the woods. It's very rural. We don't, don't have a huge amount to offer. But I know that, uh, you know, one of our close agencies does do a lot of concierge services. So you know, it, it is probably something that we're moving to over the next few years anyway. So I love to hear that when we get there, there may be something for us to use. So next up is Ben Smith from Check In Scan. Ben was actually a finalist in last year's VR Tech Awards, and I interviewed him then. So we're starting fresh today with a new interview. Well, I'm here with Ben Smith from Check In Scan again. Hi, Heather. Hello. <laughs> we did this last year, Ben. We so, did, but this this year it looks so much better. We got Streamyard. We have got the video thing going on. I love it. So absolutely. So yeah. So Ben Smith, Check In Scan finalist in the VR Tech Awards, second year being in the final. Hey, it was great to catch up with you at uh, in London. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It was good. Uh, Last November seems like a decade ago. <laughs> <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Especially when you can't travel, when you can't go anywhere. It's like, when can I travel again? <laughs> Absolutely. Do you know, I came back from that trip. I caught something on that airplane. Uh -huh. And it was really dire when I got back for about oh, a no. week. And I lost my sense of taste. I think I <laughs> ground zero. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what they're saying, though, isn't it? It's um, obviously this COVID thing is um, uh, driving everybody bananas. Uh, obviously, we do need to be sensible and have precautions. But I mean, how long has it realistically been around for? I mean, that's a good yeah. question, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, you, you hear from so many people. I think I've had this thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll come out of COVID in a, in a, in a few minutes. Just, uh, congratulations again for getting into the, the, the final three of the VR Tech Awards. But, um, Thank you very much. The announce that will be on the, uh, uh, the Vacation Hunter World Summit, which sadly will be virtual this year, and we, we don't get we don't get to see that amazing place in Annecy this year. I know. He's taken it off the website as well, I believe. But, uh, yeah, I, mean, I was really looking forward to that. It's one of, the, one of the great things about being in the industry, isn't it, being able to get together at these type of events. But, hey, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense to do it the way we're doing it this year. But hopefully next year, uh, we'll meet up together again oh, in person. I, I <laughs> very, very much hope so. It's been an, an odd year without the networking. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Very much so. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into check-in scan, and we're going to do this all over again. So what, <laughs> what got you into the short-term rental business? Um, okay, so, yeah, I mean... Basically, I live down here in Spain in Malaga on the Costa del Sol. It's one of the tourist hotspots in southern Spain. And my family were always involved in vacation rentals in one way or another. So looking after properties for um, owners back in the UK and providing property management services. I remember last year we were talking about the, you know, how you published a property before to get bookings. You know, back in the day it was in newspapers, etc. So I remember cleaning pools and doing the gardening and bits and pieces. Uh, so I think really, um, I think like most people down on the Costa del Sol, you're, you know, you're involved in um, uh, the vacation rental space in one way or another, whether it's direct or indirectly, because so many businesses down here on the Costa del Sol actually depend on vacation rentals. Um, you know, there's the laundrettes, there's the bars, the restaurants, you know, everybody depends on, on this part, this cog in the economy. So, yeah, it's going back as far as 1982, then in recent years. Um, as a web developer, web designer, I've done a few websites for some vacation rental companies. And then really, um, Check-In Scan came about. So what inspired you to create Check-In Scan? 
So Check-in Scanner really came about from a, a need to solve a problem. I'm a technologist at heart, and I like finding solutions to complicated situations and uh, trying to make people's lives easier. That's what always been my aim with technology. And a uh, few, few people kind of realized that actually um, these new regulations in collecting uh, guest IDs uh, was actually quite complex because you had to, number one, see the ID, whether that's they send you an email, they send you a WhatsApp photo, and it's blurry. You've got to then create the guest forms for them to sign. Then you've got to log into the police system. So the whole, com- the whole, the whole process for you to be legally compliant, it was quite complicated. So I uh, came up with the idea, discussed it with my business partner um, back in July 2017. And uh, the idea was to create a mobile app that would be able to scan uh, documents, collect the guest signature, on on the screen by them signing on the screen of the device and then click a button to send it and we've managed to achieve that for over two hundred two and a half thousand customers now so we can they we provide an instant legal compliance service where we take away all the headaches of the red tape so you can get on with your you know the day-to-day of the business hard enough anyway without the extra legal compliance side which is obviously important because if you don't fulfill it you you can uh, get a fine yeah i first came across this a couple of years ago going to florence Right, yeah, um, and and that was the first time that uh, you know we, we got into the apartment and we couldn't go out because we had to wait for the for the guy from the property management company to come across and and you know use his phone to take photos of our <laughs> passport. I had no idea that, yeah. that that had to be done. So I can see from from our experience, you know, having to stay there. Yeah. And we were only in Florence for four days, and we had to stop in for about two hours while we waited for this guy to come. And it, it was like it's two, crazy. two hours out of three days is is a lot. Yeah, so, I mean that that, re- that reminds me, Heather, of like when when I first started going and promoting check and scan to some of our first customers. You know, uh, important property management companies down here on the Costa del Sol. I'd actually turn up, and there'd be a queue of suitcases outside the office door. You know, and it's. You know, our solution doesn't only benefit guests, but it benefits a property manager. But from a guest point of view, when you go on holiday, you want to be on holiday. The last thing you want to be doing is arriving at a reception desk that isn't, you know, there's one person there maybe, and they're trying to process all these guests arriving, getting their documentation. So really we improved, we've actually had feedback from guests that actually the check-in experience for them has been much smoother and much more pleasant. And that adds to the credibility then of the property manager as well, because obviously they're looking a bit more kind of sophisticated and harnessing all the potential technology that's available in the market to improve uh, the guest experience. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, you know, an analogy to that, I guess, is, you know, in, in the old days, people yeah. would arrive at a property and hand over cash or they'd have to send in a fax <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. And, and now with payment processing and, on, you know, online booking, it's just streamlined the process and yeah. saved, saved everybody a ton of time. So Absolutely. when we last spoke last year, you were very much Europe-based. Yes. Um, because these, the necessity for this type of verification is, is not really well known here in, in North America. But I understand now that you are expanding. So let me hear about yeah. that. It's very exciting times for us. I mean, we just recently actually published a check-in scan to 250 countries. And by that, I mean that prior to that, you were only able to add check-in scan in Spain, Portugal, and a couple of other European com- uh, countries. And that means that our developers have basically trawled through the database and kind of got all the towns and the states and provinces and the countries together so that anybody around the world can actually use check and scan. And, and we're seeing we're seeing an, an increase in demand now from uh, worldwide, uh, especially South America at the moment and northern um, Northern America like the US, because I, I've got a feeling that with the COVID-19, there is this acceleration of we need to know who these guests are, not only from a not you know legal compliance side, which is certainly um, dictated here in Spain, but also from a track and trace point of view. Mm-hmm. So the check and scan value proposition since we last spoke last year has actually gone up um, because we, we're seeing acceleration of adoption of technology from uh, even hotels that have got um, flatbed scanners. They've got existing scanners for their solution, but because our our system now will allow you to check in somebody remotely, so you minimise the touch points with the guests. So it, everything's looking really exciting. I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to lie. It's been it's been a tough road uh, an issue with COVID, but actually there's a silver lining somewhere. I think many people have found this. Yeah, I find that fascinating because I think you know that you know what what a difference a year makes. You know, not yeah. <laughs> in, in the speed of technology, but you know, in yeah. in how we've we've either benefit. You know, 
many people have benefited from the pandemic because yeah. they, if they've been able to pivot and take advantage of the opportunities that have been presented. And I don't think this time last year when we spoke, I would have thought about how it would benefit, you know, somebody in North America where, as I say, you don't have these verification requirements. But certainly when you start to think about track and tracing, yeah. that, that it, it, it almost seems a little bit of a no-brainer having something yeah. like this. So. And I think what I can back up with that, for example, in Spain, the, the compliance requirements is that you scan a guest over 16 years of age. And we started to see that actually our clients uh, were behavior driven. They were actually scanning uh, minors as well under 16. Because here in Spain, uh, the government released some requirements. That means that you need to also keep a record of everyone staying in the property, regardless of their age, for 30 days for track and tracing. So the consumers really are driving uh, what we need to provide as a service and um, the acceleration of uh, adoption of technology is happening. And it's, it's just really exciting. At the same time, it's been very difficult for everybody out there. And uh, I'm sure that we've all learned uh, different lessons and pivoted as we can. And I think uh, health in the future is going to be inextricably linked with travel. Mm -hmm. COVID-19 uh, eventually will fade away. Um, but I think we've all learned that we need to be more aware of you know, who we're letting on the plane, who we're letting into the property, you know, up, increase our cleaning protocols and make sure that everything is got a higher level of quality, essentially. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well done for, 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 Thank you. for building <laughs> those opportunities out. Um, so <clears throat> I'll ask you this question last year again. <laughs> how, uh -huh. would, how would winning the VR Tech Award this year benefit you and your company? Um, well, it's, I mean, last year was fantastic and it was so, I mean, I, I'll be honest, it was a bit nerve wracking, obviously speaking on stage, but it was also at the same time very rewarding. And we um, we came very close to uh, Aperto, who um, obviously uh, took, you know, took the first position. Um, but, you know, it's it just be fantastic to be able to kind of win it this year. I think um, uh, hopefully we've got a good chance. I'm not counting my chickens until until it happens, but uh, it would mean a lot because uh, I think last year we we could have won it as well. So winning it this year would be fantastic. Obviously, we won the shortest 2020 back in March, but uh, definitely want to win this year as well. Well, for those who want to vote, of course, you know, go to the VR the Vacation Rental World Summit uh, in October. All the details, you know, down below this video and also on the show notes of the podcast. Well, I'll put um, links to to you, Ben. Thank so, you. So that people can get in touch with you uh, directly. Lovely. That sounds great. So it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you again. Always a pleasure. And, and Thank I, you. And I, Same. And I hope we do get to meet up again. I'm missing. I am so missing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it, I can't wait. Actually, one of the one of the great things that I look forward to is actually kind of going under networking and, you know, meeting um, everybody that's really kind of passionate about pushing the vacation rental industry forward. So fingers crossed uh, we'll be meeting soon. And thank you, Heather, so much for having us on the show. And uh, to all the, everybody listening out there, thank you so much. Yep. Thank you again, Ben. Once again, this is Check In Scan and you can find all the details on the show notes and below this video. So thank you, Ben. So thanks, Ben. Uh, terrific to talk with you again and to hear, to, particularly to hear how uh, Check and Scan has evolved over this past year and taken advantage of some of the opportunities that this weird year has presented. Because, hey, we, <laughs> you know, we've got to take whatever we can from 2020, don't we, and see how we can use it to our benefit. Okay, so finally, I'm moving on to Christoph Salmon from Reviews. Well, here we are again, and this time with Christoph Salmon from Reviews.com. Welcome, Christoph. Whereabouts are you? Thank you. Hello, Heather. Well, I'm, I'm based in Madrid. Okay. Okay. French guy, French guy, but based in Madrid since 2000. Okay. So how is it over there at the moment? <laughs> we, yeah, we are having hard times. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now confinement located not all the city, but in uh, it goes by, by uh, district. Uh, some district uh, in the, the south of, of Madrid mainly has been uh, has been locked down again. So. Well, we don't, uh, let's see how it evolves, but um, things not uh, yeah. too good. 
It's fascinating, really. I, I mean, I'm, I've never sort of studied epidemiology, but, you know, you look at it, was, it was all forecast. It was going to happen. It was going to, to start going up again. And same here in Ontario. We got we, we, we flattened our curve and now we're back up to just about where we were in, in May. So, That's yeah, it. happening everywhere. But uh, I keep saying that awful expression. It is what it is. And I, I wish we'd, we didn't have to say that one. But, uh, you know... It is what it is. So, congratulations, huge congratulations on Thank you. Thank you. getting to the final three of the VR Tech Awards. I have the huge pleasure every year of going through with Vanessa, and we, we do it in July, and we talk through all the entrants. And, and I just see every year the quality and the standard of these entrants gets better and better. And I've been in the business 25 years, and you know I am just blown away by yeah. – the technology um, and yeah. so, you know i'm super excited to hear about reviews because this is something that uh, you know certainly from my property manager perspective is something that, that this industry has needed so let's just kick off by asking you you know what got you into this business this short-term rental business in, in the first place yeah sure um well i, I started as uh, many of us as a hobby <laughs> I started 15 years ago already, by 2005, with my own apartment on uh, the Spanish coast in Costa Blanca. And I, um, very, very quickly, I started to, to become, uh, let's say, um, family and friends property manager. I started to, to manage uh, other, other properties. Until uh, 2016, I already was managing uh, 15 properties. So it was starting to be a time-consuming hobby. <laughs> <laughs> and it was already time for me to take a decision if uh, going going uh, with this as a hobby with my uh, let's say um, with my not my uh, current uh, job as a digital marketer in a in a multinational uh, company or take the decision to to quit and uh, and focus 100% on my passion which is a short rental and I finally take the decision and, and uh, absolutely one of the, ma- the best decisions I took in my, in my life to, to build my, my property management company four years ago. Wow, that's, yeah, it's a story I hear over and over again. It's, yeah. that, jump, it's that jumping ship, you know, the time comes when you just quit, quit the day job and get into <laughs> what I think is a much more complex day job. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So you had your own business managing properties. So I know how important reviews have Absolutely. have become. Uh, you know, I also know from experience how difficult it is if you are, a, you know, you have these properties on different platforms and you have your own website. You've got your reviews on on these websites and and you want them on your own as well. And so so the reviews platform is is enabling people to do that. But what inspired you to create the platform? We all know the the importance of reviews, and when you when you start to to check uh, stats and information about it, it's absolutely massive. Just to give you some some stats around that, uh, according to Bright Local, um, in, ter- in terms of trust, eighty nine percent people trust uh, reviews as much as personal recommendations from family, family and friends. In terms of SEO, showing your star reviews can uh, can increase your uh, your click through rate on Google for up to thirty five percent. It comes from a, a, an agency, a CXL, uh, specializing optimization. The third one would be in terms of, of conversion. Uh, Spiegel Institute made a survey, a study on reviews, and it shows how it can improve by two hundred and seventy percent your conversion to to have reviews or, or not. It's absolutely massive. In our industry, also uh, TripAdvisor made a made a survey uh, for uh, on, on short-term rental, and it appeared that seventy-two uh, percent of potential guests wouldn't book a property with no reviews. So, I mean, it's absolutely absolutely incredible. So, I already always had this this concern on how I could get the most of my reviews in my in my own business. And um, I've been looking for for solutions in terms of review review aggregations, but uh, there is a few players, let's say generic players, uh, that that are doing a re- review uh, review collection, review aggregation, uh, but not specialized in short term rental. They do it for many many companies. They include some OTAs, but none of them were 100% focused on short term rental, and none of them included all the specs we need in it, we needed in our industry. 
Well, yeah, I, think, I think we've been using one of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and and that's how we, we came with my co-founder to the, to the conclusion that there's something to do with this. Uh, review aggregation is absolutely common in, uh, in the hotel industry. There is uh, several players, big players with a hundred, uh, with yeah, 60, 50 and 60,000 customers in the hotel industry and, and uh, since 2008 in this uh, doing review aggregation and manage, um, reputation management, like uh, analysis of the, of the reviews. But in our, in our industry, none, there, there's absolutely no one. So we, we decided to, to go for it. Okay. So just describe to me how it, how it works. Uh, yeah. How it benefits property managers and guests and, and owners, of course. Yeah. So basically, we are all-in-one review aggregator. So what we do, uh, what we, we give the possibility to, to property managers and, and owners to, to automatically collect their reviews from, uh, from the big four, from uh, uh, Airbnb, Booking, BRBO, TripAdvisor. Also, we added uh, uh, Facebook. We'll little by little add new, new sources to, to collect automatically the, the reviews. Um, the second feature is to, to upload um, in bulk reviews you have from other, other platforms. Or if you have your own reviews, you can also upload them. And you can also uh, then ask uh, to your direct bookers to, 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 write a, to write a review. So at the end, what you, what you get is uh, you have your dashboard with absolutely all your, all your, reviews, uh, all your reviews in it. And you, um, what you have to do is to, to set up your, uh, your review widget to be able to show, show it in your, uh, in your website. So it's a customizable uh, review, review widget. To your, to your branding. We're also working on a, on a new feature to, that we'll have, we'll have at the beginning of, uh, of October to, to allow property managers or not to select if they want to show absolutely all the, the content of the reviews, reviews and responses, or only the star rating and number of reviews, depending on uh, the terms and conditions of the OTAs or depending on the, the preferences uh, of your preferences. So um, then you, you just have to copy and paste this uh, this uh, review the, the code in your on your website and, and display your, your reviews. So mainly the um, the benefits the benefits of it uh, the main three uh, are the, the to, to increase your trust mm -hmm. definitely showing um, uh, displaying reviews from genuine sources is an absolute uh, source of uh, of trust and, and credibility. Uh, we also uh, include um, rich snippets, which uh, allows you to, to show your stars in, uh, in Google. So it, it has big impact, as we, we talked earlier, on, uh, on, on your CTR and, uh, and to, to increase your, 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 your conversion and get more, more traffic, more direct traffic. And the third one is, is yeah, conversion to convert better. At, at the end, the conversion is, the, is the, the, the mix between having higher trust, getting more, more traffic. And so at the end, you have more, more, more direct bookings. But there is more, um, more benefits, uh, four additional benefits we, we offer because, as I told you, you, you have your, your dashboard with absolutely all your, all your reviews in it. So uh, one of the additional benefits is you can make an, an analysis um, of all your reviews. So when you analyze your bad reviews one by one, you lose uh, perspective. And when you, when you have a few properties, it's quite easy to do, but when you start to manage dozens or hundreds of properties like, like yourself, uh, it's quite difficult to, to have like a, a very good overview. And when you start to, to see all your, let's say, yeah, uh, bad, mm -hmm. bad reviews or less good, less good reviews, you, you start to see patterns of things you can you can improve in your business. So this is a very interesting to, to analyze at once all your bad reviews in the past six months or in the, the past year. You can also um, what you get is um, the aggregated the review aggregated review rating, which uh, become which can become a KPI, very interesting KPI of how you are performing at the global level with all your properties and then property per property. And this KPI, this KPI is a KPI you can you can follow in the, in the time and see how you are evolving, increasing uh, the experience, giving a better experience. Or at the contrary, you see that you are going down in some properties, and uh, and see it's time to do to do something with uh, with some properties. Um, that, uh, that just seems that there's so so many more benefits than uh, than, than just simply just putting. Yeah. on the site. I, I, I remember going you know going back to two thousand seven and FlipKey. 
uh, starting starting this whole review thing off. And and I remember when the original we, we got the original widget that we could put our flip key reviews on our website. And it, that, that didn't last long. You know, we did TripAdvisor eventually. Uh, so it, it seems to have been a big gap between that time, because we were showing reviews back in 2007, yeah. and 15 years later. And I, I, th I think this is great. And, um, you know, I wish you all the best in the VR Tech Awards. So what would winning the award, how would, how would that benefit your company? Wow. Uh, well, for just uh, being uh, nominated and uh, being in the final for us is already a victory because uh, I think we, we we can say we were part of the of the outsiders when we registered to VRTech. We registered the very last day it was possible to to register. We are still developing our our beta beta product. We just launched our beta our beta version one week before the end of votes. So I mean it's absolutely incredible and we're so so happy uh, to, to be to be in the final and it's it shows for, for us it's a real proof a real proof of concept showing that uh, we are we are adding value and it's something that property managers uh, were waiting and are interesting in and at the end winning uh, winning the the VR tech well it would be uh, absolutely the, be the best way ever we could have dreamed that to, as a, as a, a launch we are still in our beta Beta launch, and we we start with our let's say hard launch uh, precisely uh, around the VR tech in the, at the beginning of, of October. So it'd be um, an, an awesome way to, to to start and to also to get uh, known in the in the sector and start conversations with uh, other tech companies because we, we we are absolutely in favor of partnerships and mm -hmm. working with uh, with other companies, bringing all together more value to the short term rental industry. Wonderful. Well, to, to, to vote for reviews, um, you need to go to the uh, Vacation Rental World Summit. And of course, in, information is below this, uh, this video and it will be in the show notes if you're listening to this on the podcast. And uh, uh, Christoph's uh, information, his contact information, if you want to hear more about reviews, you'll be able to see the website address and his contact information on the show notes as well. So Christoph, very good luck. For, for your um, entry, but I know just reaching the final is is for most just good enough. It, it's it's yeah, a, yeah. A great visibility. So Definitely. I wish I wish you all the best and look forward to meeting you in person at some point in the future. Yeah, let's see in which um, conference we are allowed to <laughs> to go physically. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Hilda. That was great stuff, Christoph. Thank you so much for sharing so much about uh, reviews and how that's going to benefit uh, property managers and hosts in, in particular. And I know that this is something that, uh, that in our company we have struggled with over the years is finding a way to pull in those reviews from the big platforms and bringing them into our website. Because if you don't have... Um, and I know some property management systems allow you to do this, but many do not. So yet yeah, another great product. So we've heard about three great platforms, Domo, Check-in Scan and Reviews. And I'd like to wish all three of those finalists the best of luck in the finals. Now, everything you need to know about how to vote will be in the show notes. So go take a look at them. You know, we need as property managers and hosts to be supporting all these amazing people who are delivering just <laughs> such awesomeness to our industry and making life so much easier for us. If I look back on 25 years ago to when I sort of started out in this business and there was nothing. And here we are with just about everything automated and there for us at the click of a mouse. So I'll leave it with you. I'd love to hear from you about any of your experiences with new tech. Uh, as I said at the beginning, I'm going to be starting, we're going to be starting a, to post more videos, tech videos on our YouTube channel. So definitely go over to Vacation Rental Formula on YouTube. I'll put the link there as well and, and subscribe. We would love to have more subscribers over on YouTube. So that's it for another week. Thank you so much for joining me. I will be at the Book Direct show this upcoming weekend. 
And my presentation is, I can't remember what day, you'll just have to go to Book Direct Show and check that out. But please, you know, if you haven't bought your ticket to the Book Direct Show, I would thoroughly recommend you go do that now. And then, of course, a couple of weeks later is the Vacation Rental World Summit, which is a virtual event, of course. And so everything's there on the show notes. Go take a look and get your gym jams on, put your feet up, cup of coffee, lots of snacks, and just wallow in the most amazing educational resources that this industry is bringing you. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me. As ever, it's always lovely to be here and in your ears. It's been a pleasure as ever being with you. If there's anything you'd like to comment on, then join the conversation on the show notes for the episode at vacationrentalformula.com. We'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to being with you again next week.